everybody and welcome to another lecture on computer architecture. Today we're going to continue our uh, analysis of the functions. Uh, specifically we're going to uh, you see how to use the stack in uh, functions. A completely new subject so it will take a little bit longer than normal. Bear with me, uh, we're going to see how stack is going to be in functions. So first of all I want to uh, see where we left off last week. I showed you this, um, actually this is the basic structure that we used for functions that I put here in sort of a rudimentary uh, version that I would like you to, when you do write programs, I would like you to follow this um, sort of this, um, this, basic, uh, this basic structure. So what do we have here? We have a program that is main, actually now called it main. This is our main program and at the end I placed uh, functions. So the, the, the thing is that in the functions it would be nice to write in comment to write actually what the thing it is, what it is doing, what the arguments are um, and what the return value is. And first of all an observation is that actually a function, technically speaking, a function is always returning something while generally speaking a subroutine uh, doesn't have to um, return something. So a function is a subset of subroutines. But let's use the uh, jargon that most people use that functions are actually uh, subroutines in general. But that's a small technical detail. The thing is what we have shown, what we have seen, we use uh, to call the function is we use jump and link. What it is doing, it is taking the actual program counter of the jump and link uh, instruction, adding four to it and placing that in the return address, address register. And then in the function, when it uh, meets the jump register return address instruction here at the bottom, what it is doing, it is simply copying the return address into the program code, which by now points to um, the next instruction that is in this case uh, link uh, load to immediate into V0, uh, the number 10. And this brings me to this point here. This code is also essential. At the end of your main, don't forget to put there to terminate your program by a system call 10. Because if not, it is your program will continue and run into your functions, which probably you don't want. But this uh, compiler assembly is basically you wanted it, you got it. So it will continue here and run into your functions. So please don't forget to put a system call 10 at the end of your main function. Uh, and uh, because then you will get out of uh, trouble. Now, uh, last uh, lecture, what did we do? We made a for loop 10 times and uh, 10 times and then calling inside this loop to call sort of like our friend uh, printf from uh, C programming. And I've put here the program that we used uh, last time and I will clean it up a little bit uh, or mess it up, depends on your point of view, but uh, it's now a little bit more readable. I've taken out all the uh, things that are that were not needed. And I've also changed the, the registers we're going to use. I use now S0 and I will use uh, A1. I'm going to pass the argument into A1. And this will become clear where I, why I did this, because now I can show you how to use the, the stack. Because one thing, remember that when we were doing uh, programming, and we said that functions or subroutines in general have to be independent of the rest of our code. And that's why we always have to use local variables. Remember, do not use um, global variables because it might be so that your uh, subroutine has, is using different global variables than the main program. So you don't want that. So all the information you want to pass to your function, pass it by arguments, pass it in A0, A1, A2 and A3 and every return value uh, pass it by V0 and V1. If you have more information to pass then put them on the stack or put them in memory actually somewhere and that you in the beginning on agreed where they're going to be passed, the function and the caller and the collie and uh, place them and then uh, pass a pointer to this information. But for the moment for us it's not so important yet. What is important is that we have to make the functions fully independent. And let me show you here uh, how this can go wrong. Now uh, imagine uh, we have this program here, we have uh, S0 we're using, we're using T1, but what if 
your function is also going to use as zero. And I'm going to show you how this will uh, can mess up the things. Imagine I don't want to print uh, the argument itself, but I want to print the square of the argument. So what do I have to do here? I have to put uh, do here some calculations. So um, I'm going to mess up the program. I will do a multiply. I want to do the square so that's multiplying the argument by itself the argument came in by uh, a1 as you can see i've written it here a1 in the integer to print so i'm now going to put uh, a1 i'm going to multiply this and i'm going to put the result into let's see as zero because i know that the main program is also using that one so it will nicely mess up the program uh, i hope you can already guess what's going on here uh, and then I'm going to multiply the argument by itself and place the result into S0. That's all very nice. And you can see, of course, that S0 was my iteration or actually my n equals 10, my uh, end, the number of times I wanted to print. So if I'm going to mess here with S0, of course, then this value 10 will get destroyed. So uh, I would say, uh, Houston, we got a problem. Um, we have to do something. And now we get the uh, concept, what can we do about this yes. is actually, oh, this one is not uh, doing actually something. No, it's, uh, uh, no, sorry, S0, we now, we now it's going to print the square, of course, and then it's moving into the argument and then calls printf from the operating system. Um, so now we're going to do what we're going to do about it. The thing is, all the registers have to be saved somewhere temporarily from which they can be retrieved and continue the rest of the uh, program. So therefore, we are going to use the stack. What is the stack compared to a normal memory? Well, normal memory is a random access memory. You can place, uh, you can have access to it. Any part of the memory is available for reading and writing. The stack is different in that when you place something on the stack, only that last value is possible. So you only see the top of the stack. You can only take a thing and read the thing from the stack and take it off the stack if you want and then the next uh, thing will become available the next item so i've put here for instance if you do a function call that well, can be anything anything that is actually placing things on the stack imagine it placed abc on the stack three variables now uh, the top one only the top one is visible so we have here actually for that we have here uh, mips has here sp it's a stack pointer and the stack pointer points to the last item being placed on the stack. Well, in the beginning, of course, it is uh, it is it is empty. But if you place three things on the stack, it has the stack pointer has increased, uh, and th there are three things available. So now you can see on the top of the stack the variable c. If you do another function call, even if it is to the same function, you will again can place, for instance, three things a, b, c on the stack, and now only this c value here is visible then at the end we can remove things from the stack and then the other things become visible again so you get the idea uh, what we what we have here it is what let me see you do I have it written here somewhere exactly it's called last in first out now to place something on the stack is called pushing so you push an element on the stack how do you do this in uh, assembly well, unfortunately, MIPS doesn't have pushing and popping instructions like other um, assemblies normally they do have. For instance, the Intel uh, x86 family of uh, processors, they have popping and pushing, but MIPS doesn't have it. So we have to simulate it ourselves. How can we do this? Well, first we must subtract four from the stack pointer. And then we can do a store word, and I'm sitting in front of it. Then we can do a store word and uh, place an item on the stack, namely in the memory pointed to by the stack pointer. And then when we want to remove an item from the stack, we do this, uh, it's called popping. Also that doesn't exist, but what can we do? Well, first we load the object from the stack and then we add four to the stack pointer. So I said that it's adding to the stack, but actually it's decreasing the stack pointer because you add minus four to it. But that's a technical de detail. That's how it's implemented in uh, MIPS. So we have pushing and popping. And don't forget that the last one that you pushed onto the stack must be the first item to be popped off the stack. Otherwise, you don't recover your information correctly. And this is what we call uh, LIFO. Uh, last in, 
first out. So the last thing pushed onto the stack must be the first one to be popped off the stack. You can also call it philo if you want, first in, last out, that's all. Um, that's all very well. So uh, we have, we're going to use the uh, stack to place registers there to save them, that they can be retrieved and that the programs doesn't matter, mess up. So as you can see here, there was a problem with S0. I don't even going to run the program because I don't even know what is what will uh, going to happen here, but for sure it will not correct because my function meshes with the uh, S0 uh, stack. Uh, as a zero register. So you can understand that this goes wrong. However, so it must be saved on the stack. But now we have a problem is actually uh, who's going to do that? Where I'm going to place things on the stack? Should I put it here Sh or should I put it in the function? And now we get another convention. So this is purely conventional, meaning that if you don't use it, your programs will work okay. But if you hand in your uh, hand over your code to somebody else, it will probably go wrong. So now we're going to do um, a convention and that is that, no I don't want floating point, where do I have it? We have S registers and T registers, those are the ones that have to be saved on the stack and now that we use the convention, the S registers must be saved on the stack by the function, so that is here, uh, what we call the callee, the code that is being called, while the T registers have to be saved on the stack by the main program, the, or to, so to say the caller, the, the code that is calling the function. So in this case, um, this program, and of course if he doesn't care about it, um, then uh, if, if it's not needed, then he doesn't have to care about it. So for instance, T1, uh, is it going to be used? Uh, yes, yes, so T1 is going to be used, so just before the function call it has to be saved on the stack. So here is the function call, so here we have to save it on the stack. So what did I say? First add minus 4 to the stack pointer, first add minus 4 to the stack pointer, add immediate stack pointer, stack pointer minus 4, and store word, uh, which one did I want to save, T1, where I'm going to save it, zero offset from the stack pointer, zero offset from the stack pointer. Uh, okay, and then we're going to save our function, we're going to save our, uh, we're going to call our function and then when it comes back, the first thing we have to do is to retrieve it from the stack. So we have to do T1 and zero offset from the stack pointer. That's okay. And don't forget, it is then we have to do in reverse order, then uh, add four to the stack pointer. Four four because an int takes four bytes. If you want to do a bigger um, element, then of course you have to do more. And this one here is going to uh, use, this one doesn't have to care at all about the T registers, it's sort of like not my problem. If you forgot to put them on the stack here, it's your problem, Mr. Mr. Caller, Mrs. Caller. And here, uh, my concern is only I have to guarantee that the S registers are uh, remain um, integrity. So this one is going to use uh, S0. So this one now must save. Uh, the first thing it must do when entering into the function is saving all the edge, uh, S registers that it's going to use onto the stack. So what do, how do you save things on the stack? Add immediate to the stack pointer. And uh, now destination stack pointer, target stack pointer, minus four and store word. What are we going to store? S0. And we're going to store it zero offset from the stack pointer. Now note that S0 here uh, is used uh, also in the program, but what if I had not been using S0 but had been using S1, even then, I would have to put it on the stack, otherwise 
someday somebody will use my function call and actually is using S1. So even if you know that the caller in this moment, at this actual moment, is not going to uh, use S1 or S0, doesn't matter, you have to uh, use it, you have to store it on the stack. So uh, then the first, the sorry, the last thing that it's doing before it leaves the program is actually then retrieve the value from the stack. Load word into S0, what is going to retrieve? The zero offset from the stack pointer and then add immediate stack pointer, stack pointer four. As you can see now, the S register is guarded against um, uh, changes because at the end of the function it is then um, retrieved from the stack. So now we see it. Uh, at this moment it is putting T1 on the stack. It doesn't have to care about the S registers. Uh, and then goes into the function. The S0 is pushed on the stack. At the end here uh, S is pulled from the stack, popped from the stack. And then here um, after coming back the S uh, zero is now again a uh, T zero. I'm sorry, T zero stack pointer. I should not make mistakes here. Uh, the uh, T one register is popped from the stack. So pushing T one on the stack, popping T one from the stack, pushing S zero on the stack, popping S zero from the stack. So I'm sure now this one will uh, go correct. I'm not going to, to run it. You get the idea. So I will put this um, general template for uh, stack uh, calling, uh, popping and pushing. I will put this uh, as a comment so that you can play with it if this actually is, if you can understand uh, the structure. So I made here a general template for uh, calling functions and the related the stack pushing and popping variable uh, values on the stack. So see you in the next lecture.